says that the next state table of a 2 bit saturating up counter is given. The counter is built as a synchronous sequential circuit using T flip flops. The expression for T1 and T0 are. Alright, so a piece of advice here that sometimes students leave the question by reading only the first few lines. See, you may not be aware of what a saturating up counter is, but you know the you may know that what is the basic function of a T flip flop and how the state changes. If T is equal to 1, then what happens? Or T is equal to 0, then what happens? So Please, I would ad advise you that always read the complete question as well as all the options so that you do not make any silly mistake as well as you do not leave a question that you may actually know. Okay, so in this case, even if you are only aware of the functioning of T flip flop, then also you, are you will be able to solve this question and I will tell you how. Okay, so one thing you need to remember is that the output of a T flip flop changes when T is equal to 1 and it remains same when T is equal to 0. So what do I mean? When T is equal to 1 then the output changes. So if it is 1 it goes to 0 else if it is 0 it will go to 1 and when T is equal to 0 then no change so the state remains the same now you are given a next state table all right so if if we only consider the current state of q1 and the next state of q1 then we will know that what pattern is being followed by t1 or what would have been the value of t1 so that from the current state we have achieved the next state value okay so first i write for only t1 this is the current state q1 this is the next state of q1 and this would be the value of t1 so i'm writing the first column 0, 0, 1, 1. then the next state is 0, 1, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1, 1. And now you have to see what would have been the value of T1. Since here 0 and 0, no change is present. Therefore, the value of T1 would have been 0. Alright. From 0, the state changed from 1 in the second case. So, the value of T would have been 1. In the last two cases, the values are still unchanged from their previous current state values. That means the next state is same as the previous state or the current state and therefore the value of t1 would have been 0 0 in this case also all right now let's do the similar for q0 okay this is the current state of q0 this is the next state that we have been given and this is the value that we would find out what would have been the value of t0 so q0 is 0101 0 1 0 1 q naught plus that means the next state is 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 and 1 all right so since there is a change therefore t naught would have been 1 again a change it would have been 1 again a change but the last case there is no change so the value of t naught would have been 0 then only the previous state would have been retained all right now, you have to tell which out of the options correspond to the correct uh, representation of the values of T1 and T0. Okay, now let's see for the first option. Let's check what the first option says. If T1 is represented by the expression Q1 and Q0, will we achieve all these values? So, if I take the first value of Q1 as 0 and Q first value of Q0 as 0, so 0 into 0 would give me 0. Therefore, T1 was also 0. Therefore, in this case, this option is correct. Now, coming to the second case, Q1 is 0. We have to check for all cases because it may happen that this expression is holding valid or true for a particular case but it is not holding true for the value of t1 or t0 or for the remaining cases okay so check for the second case 
In the second case, the value of Q1 is 0, the value of Q0 is 1 and the answer should be, see, 0 and with 1 gives you 0 but here the value of T1 is 1 but the expression says that the value of T1 would be 0 so it is not matching therefore A is not the correct option you know you don't have to even check for t naught because t1 the expression that is given here should be followed for all the values of t1 and t naught in all the cases okay now let's check option b for t1 only and if it holds then we'll go ahead for t1 option b states that the expression is q1 complement and and with q naught all right so the let's find the values q1 is 0 in the first case 0 complement is 1 q naught is 0 so 1 and 0 is 0 all right so this is 0 that we are obtaining so correct but we can't stop here then we go ahead and find for the second case 0 complement is 1 1 as it is 1 and 1 gives 1 and t1 is 1 so fine this is correct now coming to the third case the third case is q1 complement q1 complement is 0 that is 1 complement is 0 then q0 is 0 0 and 0 is 0 so is it matching yes again value of t1 is 0 and here also we are given we are getting 0 all right now if the last case also matches then this option should be correct if t naught is also correspondingly correct so q1 complement is 0 q naught is 1 0 and with 1 is 0 and t1 is 0 all right so the option or this expression is matching for t1 but it may happen that the option that correspondingly specifies t naught is not correct so you cannot leave here all right because the same option for t1 is given in d also okay that is why i told you please read all the options also very carefully so checking for t naught here the expression in b part for t naught says q1 complement plus q naught complement so i'll quickly write down q1 complement is 1 Q0 complement is 1, it comes out to be 1. Okay, so it is not matching. 1 and 1 gives 1, T0, okay, sorry, it is matching. We have to match here. T0, in this case, I was matching with T1, sorry. So, coming to the next part, Q1 complement is 1, Q0 complement is 0, this would come out to be 1, again 1, correct. Then the third one is q1 complement is 0 then q0 complement is 1 again 1 and this is also 1 correct the last part is 0 plus 0 which is 0 and this is also 0 so this expression is also correct and hence the correct answer is option b you need not go further because multiple options cannot be correct at the same time all right and even if multiple options are correct, if you mark one of the correct options, uh, you get the marks because that doesn't really happen in such uh, level exams. But by mistake, if a question appears that has two correct answers, if you mark any of them, you get the marks or you get uh, benefit of doubt. All right. Given f of w x y z is equal to sigma. 0 1 2 3 7 8 10 and sigma of d that means don't care terms are 5 6 11 and 15 where d represents don't care condition in the Carnot map which of the following is a minimum product of some form of x of f of w x y and z all right so one thing you'll notice in this question is that you are being asked product of sums but you are given an expression for sigma. So sigma m basically represents the cells where 1 would be present for sum of products form. Okay, So you can remember it like this that sigma basically represents the cells 
where one would be present. Okay, for sum of products form or SOP form. So if you want to write down the answer in product of some form you need to combine the zeros and the don't care terms and not the ones that are specified here so that is the trick in this question okay all right so if we have to find out the terms where zero would be present the those terms would be written as See, 0, 1, 2, 3, then since 4 is neither present here nor in don't care, we can write 4 here, 5 is present here, 6 is present here, then 7 and 8 are present here, 9 is not present, 10 is present, 11 is present, 12, 13 and 14 are not present. Alright, so 12, 13 and 14 would also form the cells where 0 would be present for product of sums form all right so these are the places where zero would be present and now let's draw the Carnot map and then solve the question and find the minimum product of sum form so drawing the Carnot map since there are four variables, so it was it would be a four cross four Carnot map, and a four cross four Carnot map would have cell numbered from zero to fifteen. All right. Please remember the order in which the variables or the values are written in a Carnot map. This is zero. 1, 2, 3, then 4, 5, 6, 7, then 8 is written here, 9, 10, 11, then 12, 13, 14 and then 15. Alright, so if since we have 4 terms, W, X, Y and Z, here we will write W and X and here we will mention Y and Z. So, Men specifying the values for 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and the corresponding expressions they would be like w plus x which is 0, 0 then w plus x complement then w complement plus x complement that is 1, 1 and w complement plus x and similarly here y plus z which is 0, 0 y plus z complement which is 0 1 then 1 1 which is y complement plus z complement and the last would be y complement plus z all right so we know uh, that the places where 0 would be present are 4 so 4 0 would be present 9 9 0 then 12 13 and 14 all right and the don't care terms are present at 5 6, 11 and 15. Alright, now we have to combine them so that we can form the largest possible pair or largest possible group for a, a value of 2 raised to power something or you can say you can you have to form the largest pair that is a multiple of 2. Alright, so let's see what can be the pairs that can be formed or not pairs but groups that can be formed. See one group that can be formed is comprising of these four values all right and the other group that you can form is comprising of these four values so that all the zeros are used in some group or the other and this is the remaining don't care term so you don't have to specifically form a group only because this don't care is left okay you can leave it as it is now if we find out what is the actual expression that is represented by these groups since this these are the two columns and these are the two rows these are the two rows for this particular group the circle one so what would be the expression in both these columns the common variable is z complement and in both these rows the common variable is w complement so it would be w complement plus z complement all right 
so this is one way and this the, the this is one expression and the second expression would be it comprises of these two rows and the first and the last column so the common variable here is x complement and the common variable for the first and last column is z so this would come out to be x complement plus z and since it is a pos form that means product of the sums so first we'll write the sum which is this and we'll make the product out of them so this is the final expression that you would get for the minimum pos form now let's see which option corresponds to this x complement plus z and w complement plus z complement so it is the first option itself so that is the answer for this question so it is a very simple question in which you have to draw the Carnot map find the groups and find out the expression but the only trick was that i told you that this is a sigma specification that means if you directly fill in these cells and combine the group or make the group using these cells you'll find an actual sop representation okay so that's how you will do this question i hope you understood this question please like our video share it with your friends and let us know in the comment section below how did you find the video Subscribe to the channel of Easy Engineering Classes for more such lectures in the preparation series and other computer science subjects. Thank you for watching. Sub uh, like our channel and press the bell icon to get the notification of our upcoming videos. Thank you.